what the fuck is happening, people? Welcome to the General Banter Podcast. Uh, today it's what? Well, I, this is what we're doing. We're trying to get in the rhythm of recording this bullshit on a motherfucking Monday. So this will be out on Tuesday the 28th. Uh, at this point in time, I'm looking to take a bit of time off stand-up, so I'll fuck all the plug other than Lavery's, which will be back on the 5th of February. Let me just check. Let me check. You know what I mean? Here, While I have you, you know what I mean? Let me just, in silence, scroll on down. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. And where is it? And where is it? There it is. And I've, uh, you know, the, for no reason, I've kept the whole year. Damo Clark. It's Damo Clark, uh, who is Australian, but he lives in Dublin, as far as I know. And he's one of the very best comedians in the world, I would say. Okay. So make sure you get down to see him. Get Lavery's coming up. I'm doing a tour of uh, the South this week. Tuesday, I'm in University College Concert Hall or something in uh, Limerick. And that's with Tom the Bear O'Mahony. And, uh, as far as I know, it's just me and him. I don't know how it's is it tied in with something to do with the university. I don't know, but I'm turning up and uh, we'll see what the fuck happens. And then home, and then uh, I have to go to motherfucking where's next Castle Bar Mayo. Uh, that's a gig run by Danny O'Brien, and uh, we're gonna go down there. And he texted me today, and he's like, "Do you want to go to do a boxing class before it?" And I was like. Sure, you know, do a bit of work and I'll have sat in the car for three and a half hours. And he's like, yeah, cool. The guys here were asking if you had a gum shield. And I was like, oh, no, you seem to have got your wires crossed. Who the fuck with no boxing experience is going to be sparring before a gig as if I don't have enough trouble remembering my fucking stuff? You know what I mean? You want me to go in there and get fucking clobbered around the head? Because I'll tell you what happens. They go, let's pair someone up roughly your weight. And then some cunt who's like, Fucking 19 and a half stone of sheer muscle. And I get tossed in with that cunt. And I'm like, oh, he's 6'8 and enormous. And he's going to beat the shit out of me. You know what I mean? And then I have to get on stage and be like, um, ignore the black eye and the teeth missing. But uh, what's the crack with Ryan there? You know what I mean? Fuck that shit. I'll turn up. You know, I'll be like, what's your grind game like? Because, listen, I'll take these. I never even got stripes on it. But you know what I mean? I'll be like, that's the thing. I, I would love to. First of all, I'd love to do way more jujitsu. But you know what I mean? I would love someone to at some point go okay, this is what you are, because I don't even know what I am, you know what I mean, doing jiu-jitsu on and off for quite some time, I've done it about six months, you know, but uh, we're looking to change that, because things are, times are changing, and things are getting refined, and the big man's gonna have a lot more free time in his hands, you know what I'm saying, uh, now what the fuck was I talking about, I'm going from Castle Bar, it's sold out, you know what I mean, <laughs> me and Shaney T are going down to do that one, you know what I mean, so the fucking... Popping batters in the... I tell you, fucking here. There won't be a gluten-free bap left in that town. You know, Todd will go through it like a goddamn hurricane Todd. <sniffs> slurping up all your gluten-free baps. You know what I mean? Um, So we'll go do that. And then the next day, uh, I have to go to Galway. And I'm headlining the Roisin Dove. Roisin Dove. I can't speak Irish, but I, th- I do believe it. Mean, does it mean Black Swan? Who the fuck knows? I get it. Someone told me that, and they could have just been complete. They could have been like, no, that means the elephant's cock. And I would have been like, sweet, man. Uh, so there, and Mark McCartney is supporting. So hopefully we'll get some content. Uh, Mickey Bartlett just texted me. Okay, concerning. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm going away. And, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll vlog the week. You know, we'll try and... What will I call it? I'll call it my pre pre Brexit tour. You'll see how it goes. But that's it, man. Play the fucking intro. Eat my ass, and we'll get back to this fucking stuff here. The General Banter Podcast with Colin Jettis. What about you, baby? I want you to get yourself and your soul together. This man will make your liver quiver. This man will make your bladder splatter. Let's all welcome the world's godfather of soul. Colin Jettis. Uh, it's Gettis, actually. Jettis. 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 Fuck you. Yes. I'm going to text Mickey Bartlett here and see where he is. And if he's close by, I might try and get him to swing in. Where are you now? Where are you now? So let me tell you something. <clears throat> let me tell you something. Uh, I'm wearing a grey top. It's the, it's the general apparel one that we got made last minute and i put photos up of it before the the sse gig and everyone was like oh my god where's that from there was fucking lunatics that were gonna go 
to the fucking Odyssey and buy this t-shirt, buy this top, and they weren't even going to the fucking gig because they went to the first one and they didn't get tickets to the gig at all, which is fucking demented. Demented. Uh, sorry. Oh, he's in there. Okay. Um. So, uh, yeah, it's all good. You know what I mean? I'm wearing this top. But here, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's been chipping into the Patreon. It, they keep rolling in. Uh, and I keep fucking promising things and they never come about. But I'll tell you what's happened. We we have the final SSE gig out of the way. And uh, I've got a couple of gigs this week. And then I've deliberately not planned to do anything. And I put the feelers out there for uh, some office space. And uh, <coughs> a full-blown asthma. You know what I mean? I did deadlifts earlier. Finished on the, uh, on the assault bike. And I have fucking bronchitis. Um, but... I put the feelers out there. I was like, I'm looking for a space. I went and met, you know, Dylan Osborne, you know, at Dill Takes Photos, follow him. Uh, he had an office and I was like, mm, don't know if I'm feeling this, you know, great space if you're just editing or whatever. And I was like, can I bring guests to somewhere like this? Whatever, whatever. Um, and then I got a bit of a, I got a bit of a message from an old schoolmate of mine and he's like, we got an office if you want to come look at it. So all being well, he said he, you know, he has to pay for the whole building anyway. And he's like, Listen, this is here if you want it. So we're going to go see that next week. If only I didn't have all these gigs down south, I'll be going to see that. And that is going to kick off a whole chain of reactions, a chain of events, guys. Because we're going to go in there. We're going to have set aside time for um, podcast recording. So there might be one or two days a week where I go, okay, this day I record my podcast. And then I record a guest podcast. And then the next day I record two other ones. And we are going to fucking go full-blown rogan on this bitch there's gonna be a bit of a delayed reaction so if you fucking want to get extra podcasts um we'll be putting up extra podcasts on the patreon and they'll sit there for a little while uh, and then they will slowly drip out on on the actual rss feed the free podcast after a period of time but they will be uploaded douche in bulk on the patreon and uh, I'm going to get some help to help process the data so that I can free myself up. So we're basically going to do two intense sort of recording days a week. And uh, there'll be a lot more motherfucking content in a space that's set up just for podcasting. No distractions. Up the palers. You know what I mean? So that's exciting. Fingers crossed. But for everyone who's chipped in the Patreon, there is stuff on the way. Big stuff. You know what I mean? Um, and you, I must actually check out... I mean, this, I'm so bad at this. What I might actually do is uh, chip into someone else's Patreon and see if I can go up on their, uh, up on their fucking, whatchamacallit, and watch some of the stuff up on their Patreon if it's on the app. So there you go. Big things ahead. And that's what we're getting into. We're stepping the game up, okay? Because I want to be able to do this podcast. I want you to get lots of podcasts. I want to have lots of guests. And I want to fucking, you know, be able to just go like, listen, I'm going to go to another country and record with some people. You know what I mean? And it and it's still making money and you're just getting more content. And that's what's all about content. I say content a lot there. And I currently look like a ghost. Just a floating head. So <clears throat> here we are. Last week, Maureen was in hospital again, getting her third round of chemo. That's it, done. <laughs> Halfway there, living on a prayer. Um, So she was done and she was in all week and I was taxiing the fucking baby up and down to the hospital, which is becoming... A little long in the tooth. And that's not even the right saying. But it's f- I'm sick to death of it. You know? Um, this is when this is when people enter that fuck cancer mode. And they're like, do you know what? Fuck, I can't have you with this shit. And I don't even fucking have it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but I'm taking the child up and down. And uh, I'll tell you what they were doing the other day. They were doing a fucking bit of work at Craig Alvin Hospital. Now, this is this is what I'm like, you know, I'm a fairly liberal guy, but then also, also I'm like, where's the fucking guillotine at? Because they were resurfacing a bit of a fucking... Uh, <coughs> I have all sorts of lung diseases. Um, they're resurfacing a fucking car park, right? Which means there's a whole area of car park which would hold hundreds of cars that is now out of use. And people still have to go to work. They still have to turn up every day. They still have to start on time. So they're probably going, right, do you know what? I'm not going to circle this fucking place for an hour to try and find a parking space. I'll park up in this little grass bank, doing no harm for the meantime. We all know, fuck up, would you? We all know that, uh, you know, the, the circumstances, i got to just park. 
And it's the only day of all the fucking days I've been to this hospital, which I could drive to with my fucking eyes closed at this point. I get there and there's a parking attendant, a traffic warden in the hospital. And I was like, you fucking scumbags. You know what I mean? It's that is, that is basically fucking entrapment, isn't it? Where they're like, well, this will be it. We're going to fucking rake it in the day because people can't park in that car park. So we're going to absolutely clean up. And you're like, you fucking scumbags. Especially at a hospital, like, at a fucking hospital. By the way, this is, this is another thing that drives me. This, this grinds my fucking gears. See if you want money off me, make it absolutely effortless. I f- see if, like, there were times when I was coming out of that hospital in not great form, guys. In not great form. And I'm like, oh, I have to go and fucking lift money now in another bit of the hospital. And, like, break it somewhere. And then fucking put the coins in the thing. I should be able to walk past that and just go, dude, and get out of the co- I should be able to... Fuck that. I should be able to drive. Fair enough, give me a card. I should be able to drive to where I'm leaving, you know, where the fucking barrier goes up, which I've nearly ripped off several times, and just fucking touch it with a card. Boop! Or my f- whatever. Some people do an Apple Watch, some people do a phone. Dude, just touch it and move on. Instead of like, oh, you want to leave the hospital after getting terrible news or being up all night or whatever the fuck you're doing? Well, you know? Or you've just worked a 14-hour shift and you're exhausted and you're like, oh, let me... Then we go lift the tenor, and they're going to charge you one seventy five to lift the fucking tenor. <sighs> Guys, someone needs to go on sportsdirect.com and order yourself a goddamn goggle snorkel combo set. Okay? And put a Veruca sock on and fucking delve right into my shitter. Unbelievable! Unbelievable. Like, what a bunch of mercenary cunts. I'm just looking at a photo of me and getting a photo in front of the whole uh, SSA arena there. There you go. Anyway, the gig happened, <clears throat> and that day I went down. You know what I mean? I'd already done it one time before, so you know what? I'm like bored. <laughs> I'm like, ah, well, fucking sure, you've done You know what I mean? You've seen one three and a half thousand people. You've fucking seen them all, haven't you? <laughs> Only joking. What really happened was I was a lot calmer, although Maureen was still in hospital, and I was a bit fucking on edge. You know what I mean? You just don't feel right. The baby was with uh, his granny. And I was like, this is weird. And you know when you're sorting a guest list for fucking everybody? Whatever. Um, and uh, there was actually, I think there was more people at the second one, believe it or not. But uh, yeah, went up. Did the gig. It was all good, man. Do you know what I mean? It was it was almost a carbon copy of the first one. Because I didn't have a support, I'd go out, i do my jokey jokes. I think I did okay in the first half. And as usual, like every comedy night, everyone gets a couple of sauces in them. A couple of jars. Comes back out. And they're much more up for it. And the second half is good. And fucking give them a last bit. Yeah, cheers, guys. Everyone fucking stood up. No, and we're out of there. And that's it. And before I went on stage, Maureen had got home and her, her sister uh, and Dutch Frank went and fucking picked, them, picked her up. And, uh, you know, she was already at home with Eddie. And I was like, can settle a wee bit. And I'm in at the back of the Odyssey. And I'm fucking uh, in the green room. And I'll tell you something, guys. This is what pisses me. First of all, Thanks to everyone who came out, because it was fucking incredible, and, you know, it's, you know, it's a pretty fucking remarkable thing to be, like, to have no traditional media behind you, and be able to do this, and everyone comes out and sees you, and hopefully everyone had a great time. I didn't have any complaints, apart from one, which I'll get to, and we'll all laugh, because, you know, it's very sad. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it was, it was fucking incredible, and... Got off stage, you know. This is, I mean, this is this is this is the sort of shit, you know. People are like, you know, what's it like, man? It must be brilliant. And you're like, no, not when you're fucking mentally ill like me, okay? Because this is what happened. I'm backstage. I'm starving. You know, the guy from the promo company wasn't there, and I was like, man, where is he? Get, you know, do what you did last time. Bring some fucking pizzas, bro. I could have rang pizzas myself, but they have an account and all. I was like, get, bro, get some fucking pizzas up in here. I want some pizzas, man. You know, got some, you know, Woodsy and all was there. Fucking McCann, Mickey came up with me. I was like, come on, get a fucking, you know, get a fucking load of pizzas in. No one turned up, right? And then eventually I got there and then the pizzas came and I fucking shoveled a bit of pizza into me. And it was too late to really enjoy it, you know what I mean? You're like, I'm eating this so basically my stomach isn't rumbling. Uh, which is not the best food to be eating, uh, in all fairness. And then I go do the gig and I come off and the fucking, you know, my Dan was there and fucking piles back. All Maureen's ones, fucking all their mates, fucking. And so I watch you from afar, huh? You know, one of my favourite bands of all time. Got them guest list. They all piled in. You know, everyone's there. I know some of the boys from More Than Conquerors, they were on the fucking guest list. Couldn't get through to them. Whatever. Um, 
but the the green room was packed, you know. And I told my dad, I was like, you know, and so I watch it from afar. And he goes, oh, because I made him listen to them eight years ago. And I was like, that's them over there. And he's like, oh, oh my God, is it? Shut up, bro. what are you doing here? And I was like, you're more impressed, which is fair enough because they're amazing. But I was like, you're more impressed that they're here than than you are at me, that I just played a fucking arena. You dumb bitch. And this is what's wrong, my. You know what I mean? So... Anyway, everyone's fucking drinking, drinking all the free beers and everything. Not free, I paid for them, of course. But you find out, you know what I mean? These ones are going through squares of toilet roll going, well, you, you're 27, 27 bits of toilet roll, so we'll put that in the fucking bill, will we? Someone sends me a photo afterwards, and I was fucking livid. Someone sends me a photo, and it says the Gadzilla burger, right? And now, I already had issue before this. Someone at the last gig, someone was like, "Oh, we're doing a we're doing a beer deal. Get us a pint." Because my name is Colin. Get us, get us a pint. And it was like th- three pints for the fucking, or four pints for the price of three or something. And I was like, "This is a fucking goddamn Heineken drinks promo." And I said to the, pro- the promotion guys, "I was like, is this okay? You know, I was like, am I being a fucking diva, or are they trying to flog beer just because my name is Get us, and it kind of goes with the Get us a pint thing?" And he goes, "Oh my god, this is a fucking insult." He went over and went through them. And I was like, I see, I, th- I felt, you know, I felt like I was being a bit of a diva. But then you're like, this is a fucking international drinks company. Drinks corporation. Throw me some fucking beers. You know what I mean? Ask me if you want to do a drinks promo with my fucking name in it. Anyway, we should be suing them. Anyway, and then the second week, someone sends me a picture. What's all this about? The Get- Gedzilla burger, because the show's called Gedzilla. And I sent the promo guys the thing, and I was like, they've, they've done it again. The Gedzilla burger. And everyone's like, what's this all about? No, it was tasty. And I'm like, now, I get what you're doing. It's smart. My name's Geddes. The show's called Gedzilla, as a pun. And you went to Gedzilla Burger because it's a monstrous thing. But someone has made an ad on Photoshop, Photoshop to put on your fucking screens. You know, you put it on your screens and you're selling this burger. And I'm downstairs, starving, having to order pizza that I fucking paid for myself. And you're upstairs selling Gedzilla Burgers. Absolutely slide me a burger. Yes, cunts, yes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Three and a half thousand, seven, seven thousand people over, over two gigs. And yes, can't send me a fucking burger down the stairs. My blood was boiling. Okay. I was fucking raging. Unbelievable. It wouldn't have crossed your mind. I wonder would, could, could Colin Geddes, doing his show Gedzilla, Get a photo with the Gadzilla burger that we made. I wonder, is he hungry? I don't know. I'm sure he'll be okay downstairs with three bottles of water. What the fuck's going on? Honest to God. I'll take that to the grave, guys. Hashtag never forget. Harambe. You know what I mean? Absolutely livid. Fucking livid. Anyway, thanks for coming out, guys. Unbelievable. You know what I mean? Got loads of messages. Everyone's saying this is the fucking funniest thing I've ever seen. You know what I mean? I don't go to stand that much, but I fucking absolutely pissed myself. You know, was dying laughing, fucking funniest thing I've ever seen. Was had of having a bad week, laugh my bollocks off. You know what I mean? People loving it, apart from this woman who said, Colin, I've just left your gig in the Odyssey. Not to put a dampener on your night, but I was I really feel I need to write this. That's my brain hanging up on you. Um I really feel I need to write this. I couldn't possibly not just have written this. The first half was fab, but the second half was incredibly tasteless. Really? The first half was pretty tasteless as well. Marion. It made me feel sick to my stomach. I'm a mum of three beautiful little girls. As a dad of a new beautiful little boy, as he grows up, you will understand that our world is a really tough place and you'll be so protective of Eddie. Absolutely no shit. You will realise that paedophilia is a very real threat and really not funny. I'm sure you're an intelligent guy. I'm sure I am, Marion, and I'm nearly positive that I'm probably a lot more intelligent than you, God forbid. Because I wouldn't go to a comedy show and then laugh at everything. And then as soon as I bring up paedophilia, which was in the context of a Michael Jackson documentary. Are you sending him DMs? An actual fucking paedophile? Huh? I'm sure you're an intelligent guy and will be a loving dad, but there are a lot of more tasteful ways to make your money, even through comedy. I wish you every success in the future, but in all honesty, where can I get my money back? Now, here's the thing. If you go to Ticketmaster.ie, fair, you know what I mean? Tear away and see if you can get your money back off them. I don't have the money. 
I don't have the money right now. You know what I mean? It has to go through a filter of many, many people with their hand up my ass before I get the money. So, uh, there you go. Now, oh, wait, where's my fucking... Hold on a second. Where's my... Hold on. Wait there. Wait there. There, get something. This will be worth it, won't it? Now, the, the pedophile bit came in there in the second half. This is my set, right? So let's see what we've got. I did a bit there uh, at the start of it, right here. The getter bucked. I was talking about getter bucked and how inappropriate that is. Uh, I talked about diversity. I said about diversity in ads. Um, I said about a case where a trans person in America went in and get their sh- went in to get their scrot waxed, and the people were like, "We can't do this because you've got a cock." Um, re- uh, razor ads. Also, there was a bit in there about wokeness, and then did a bit about Caitlyn Jenner. So I was tearing into Caitlyn Jenner. The whole trans movement. There was a whole, there was a trans bit about fucking uh, you know getting your dick getting a getting a dick put on, um, drinking I was throwing up. Uh, the weed vape bit was about me smoking too much weed out of a vape. The weed OD smoking too much weed in Amsterdam, freaking out near you know fucking doing all sorts of stupid shit. Went to a sexual in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, all the fucking horrendous shit I seen there. Girls with bananas in their fanny. People pulling beads out. Uh, uh, you know, Kim Kardashian getting banged by Kanye West. Also, you know, all sorts of shit. You know, ordering an Indian and me being too fat. I was slagging myself to death. I was slagging fat people. Body positivity. I was making fun of accents. That was racist as shit. I was talking about addictions. Talking about wanking. Talking about fucking all sorts of shit. Talking about McDonald's gym. Da 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 da. And then we and then we get to the Netflix bit. And then it was uh, the bit about you know Michael Jackson. And that bit was distasteful. So we wandered through all of that shit. All of that shit. Then I talk about an actual documentary that's actually on TV about an actual pedophile. And she's like, eh, that fairly took the taste out of my mouth. Do you know what I mean? All the colours just start, suddenly got duller in the world. Now I was on board with the woman with a fucking banana up her asshole. But here, when you talk about it, this is what cracks me up. This is what cracks me up. Get in the get in the DMs of actual pedos. You know what I mean? Uh, did you bring up Gary Glitter? Man, your fucking career should be cancelled. What about Glitter? You know what I mean? He's on a Vespa in Vietnam with fucking two fingers up wee boys' b-holes. Anyway, that's just me cracking up. We'll, we'll lighten it up, guys. You know what I mean? I had a great time. I had a great time and I don't have coronavirus and it's it's all good, baby. You know what I mean? Not yet, anyway. I mean, this is when the internet just goes fucking bananas, doesn't it? You know what I mean? People can't wait a second. Like, coronavirus? You watch those videos in China. People literally just fucking, like, stand in there, like, Ugh, and then just, poof, they just keel over, and then they're having, like, full, looks like a seizure, even though it's just a goddamn fucking flu or something they've got. And, of course, the, the, the internet's just straight on it. The coronavirus? Did you try putting some lime with a corona? <laughs> All the fucking dads high five at each other. Fucking right. I tell you what, I'm not a big Corona fan, so I've never had the coronavirus, but I tell you what I have had. The fucking tenants virus. <laughs> know what I mean? Fuck's sake, man. <laughs> know what I mean? I've never had the Corona. I've had, do you know what? I was out last Saturday and then the Sunday morning, I had a fucking coronavirus. So it did, aka a, a hangover. Ah. Fucking banter, man. That's fucking banter. Uh. People are joking around, you know what I mean? Memes like. <sighs> Fuck's sake. Who would win? It says deadly virus, face mask, and then they're taking the piss out of like fucking Asians wearing a face mask. The reason they wear it is because they're like in Hong Kong and you could literally fucking jet ski on the smog. It's that thick. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure you can't avoid getting sick, but they're like, maybe the fact that I could chop a block of this smog up and put it in a box and take it home. 
Maybe I'll wear a fucking face mask when I'm out. People are complaining that their wish.com things are taking too long. Um, but yeah. Why do people, why the fuck are people putting lime in a Corona? I mean, it, just Corona. No one does it with any other beer, do they? Imagine some cunt just walking around with a pint of heart with a fucking lime in it. Isn't it so funny? Like, you would get dogs abuse. For, that's how funny the word is. Just because you're, you're not used to what you're used to. You know what I mean? It's like, Corona, do you want a lime in it? Yes, please. You know? You get it, you order a fucking... You order like a Heineken, put a put a lime in it, and everyone's like, "Mate, what is what the fuck is wrong with you? Do you have a brain injury or what?" Fuck sake! There's a guy uh, in China with a fucking face mask on, and he's got a wee hole in it, and there's a fag in it. So shout out to that guy. I've never had a cor- tell you what. I look at a coronavirus. I'm more of a fucking Carlsberg man. Carlsberg don't do viruses, but if it did, it would be a fucking... Why? <laughs> In all seriousness, seriousness, though, when people are going on about fucking your wee girl and, you know... You know, how dare you? You have ruined my future. And it's all global warming and fucking plastic straws and whatever, bro. And that noise was directly out of my throat. That might be coronavirus. It's, I mean, it's literally fucking, it's going to be one of these shits that just kills everybody. And here's a fucked up thing. Kobe Bryant died, right? I don't know anything about him or basketball. But I was reading, I was feeding the baby in the middle of the night. And then I read some fucking, uh, I read some things about him. And then I fell asleep and I had a dream, right? That I was somehow involved in this sort of eyes wide shut style fucking dinner party with all these elite folk, you know, the Epsteins and whatever, choke fucking each other. And uh, they basically were like, guys, there's going to be some sort of major news story and we're going to need something to deflect the energy. So they were like, the next person to be uh, publicly executed is going to be a superstar basketball player, Kobe Bryant. And everyone clapped and he was like, yes, he was so happy. And then they went up and he did a speech and then they, they revealed on a big screen. They're like, this is how you're going to die in a, in a parachute cr- or a, what am I talking about? In a fucking helicopter crash. Uh, and then everyone clapped. And then I woke up and I was like, <gasps> and I was like, that's freaky because I was just reading about that. And then, you know, I know that it's happening at the same time as this fucking coronavirus. And I'm like, imagine they did that just to deflect some energy or whatever. Um, you know, and then I was like, that's the last time I have Honey Nut Cheerios before I go to bed. Fucking crazy, crazy time. Take me to crazy time. Hmm? And I'll stop melting cheese on them too. Do you know what? Maureen told me one time that she ran out of milk or something and she said she put squirty cream on Cheerios when she was a student. And anytime I do anything fat boy, you know, she's like, oh, are you really eating that now? I'm like, listen, you told me one time at least 12 years ago that you put fucking squirty cream on a goddamn thing of Cheerios. So fuck you. You know? And then I eat fucking six banana muffins. But sure, what can you do? It's, there's fruit in it, six a day. Um, But yeah, the coronavirus, mm, not great. That's what's going to wipe everyone out, you know what I mean? And you'll get some dickhead where they're like, don't leave the country. And then he's like, I, I think I'll leave the country anyway. And then he leaves the country and people fucking just start coughing up fucking blood. I had a, I had a flu once, right? And you know, you're you're poor and you're living in some shithole in Belfast. And you don't really think much of it. But I was like, I could have quite, quite handily just died. You know? I was sick, bro. I was coughing up fucking... Just chunks of fucking blood and everything. Grim. Fever. You know, Maureen was working at the time and I was just sitting. I remember it was during the Six Nations. I, now, I could have easily died. Now that I'm a bit smarter and older, I'm like, I will never get a fucking cold like that in my life. If I feel something coming on, we are straight to the doctors. And I'm like, give me steroids. Give me everything right now. But yeah, coronavirus, enjoy it. Um... Yeah, Kobe Kobe Bryant there fucking died in a helicopter crash. That's rough as shit. And people are always like, why do why do people fucking celebrate celebrities when he dies so much and then they don't celebrate normal people? And you're like, because the things that the person has done to make themselves a celebrity makes them a, you know, household name. And a lot of people 
you know, are inspired and love the person. So that's why you fucking moron. You know, you don't have to be into basketball to realize Kobe Bryant was a fucking, you know, savage. It's a bit like the way, you know, you've never got on a bike in your life, but you're going to read a fucking, you know, Lance Armstrong book to just be like, let's get inside this guy's mind. Same with Kobe, you know what I mean? Crazy mind, crazy competitor, you know, elite athlete, elite mindset, rapist. (laughs) Kobe Bryant. Rapes. I don't know even what the crack was, but I did hear it. Journalist suspended for tweet. Oh, someone made a rape joke. About did he? I mean, Spans reporter after the Kobe Bryant rape allegation tweet. Kobe Bryant sexual assault case, according to Wikipedia. Began in 2003 when the news media reported that the sheriff's office in Eagle had arrested professional basketballer Kobe Bryant in connection with an investigation of a sexual assault uh, complaint by a 19-year-old hotel employee. Bryant had checked into the Lodge Spa a hotel in Colorado on uh, June 30th in advance of having surgery uh, near there on the July 2nd. The woman accused Bryant of raping her in his hotel room. Oh, God. Bryant admitted to a sexual encounter with his accuser. But, in, but denied the assault allegation. The case was dropped after Brian's accuser refused to testify the case. Uh, a separate civil suit was later filed against Bryant by the woman. This was settled out of court and included Brian publicly apologizing to his accuser, the wood admitting no guilt. Mm. <laughs> That's always weird, isn't it? That's always weird when it's like settled out of court because it's like you're kind of like, what do you want? You know, if you if you had actually, who knows what happened? If you if you'd been rape raped, do you want justice or do you want money? You know what I mean? And it's weird. Like, do you know what I mean? If you'd if you'd been really i don't know what you know what i mean it's a bit you know obviously it's just probably a step worse but like if someone had killed someone that i knew and you're like i'm gonna fucking send you to jail and there was a lot of chats outside the jail and you're like listen i may or may not have killed them but listen if i throw you 10 million would you fucking shut your face and you're like yeah i don't mind that you killed you know one of my family members but i'll take the 10 million i'll say nothing who knows bro who knows and then also you know it's such a dodgy territory with these people who are multi-millionaire sports people who literally could do more fucking than any of us can ever imagine it's crazy anyway he died in a fucking helicopter crash with his daughter and the thing which is absolutely grim um and a bunch of other people who also died and then they keep posting things on the internet with him fucking, you know, doing a wee sneaky high five to his fucking, his daughter while she was at the side of the, at the side of the, what do you call it, basketball pitch, you know? Very sad, man, very sad. But, uh, and then the Grammy, they had the Grammys like on the same day and they interviewed McGregor and he's like, yeah, it's hard to get up for this, isn't it? You know what I mean? In LA, when like one of your biggest fucking stars of all time just fucking died. Anyway. Rough carry on. Who won? Let's let's see who won the Grammys, even though I barely give a fuck. Grammy winners. Squirt. Billy Eilish. Is she a lesbian? Um It's it's confusing. Um Oh, Pedo comment of the year from Colin. It's confusing when you know there's a lot of people who are like Man, it happens with loads of people. Man, she's hot. And then someone's like, she's 16, bro. But in the case of Billie Eilish, if someone goes, she's hot, and you go, bro, she's like, what age is she now? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Welcome to Pedo Checkers with Gaddis. Billie Eilish. Age. Age. She's 18. Now, the thing about her being 18 right now is that she's actually not. She's 41. Okay, Billie Eilish is a 41-year-old woman, and that's a fact. 
Um, which is one of those things you're like, oh my god, she's hot, and then someone's like, she's seventeen, and then the real, the, you know, the real crack is when she's twenty eight. You're gonna be like, she's sixty. What about sixty year old Billie Eilish? You know what I mean? Fair, wild talented though. Or is she? Or does her brother just make songs with her? Who knows? You know what I mean? Who the fuck knows? You know what I mean? She's all like, I got fucking bruises on my knees and all this hair shit. And you're like, bro. <laughs> That's 41-year-old divorcee type shit you're saying here. Who won? 2020, obviously, you dumb bitch. Not ever. There's just this list of everybody. For fuck's sake, bro. Let's see. Record of the record records of the year. Billy Eilish, bad guy, album of the year, Billy Eilish, song of the year, Billy Eilish, new artist, Billy Eilish. Uh everyone cleaned up, dude. Um Pop Duo Grip Performance, Old Town Road, Old Town Road, Lil Nas, Rap Album of the Year, Igor by Tyler the Creator. Uh Rap performance, Racks in the Middle by Nipsey Haas. Now, what's... Huh? Rock album, Cage the Elephant. Rock song, This Land by Gary Clark Jr. <clears throat> anyway. Now, McCann would have ripped the cock off of himself knowing that Tyler the Creator won that fucking award. And that's all he ever wanted was a Grammy, dude. Let me see Tyler the Grams. Uh, uh, did he do a performance? Yes. Tyler the Creator, Grammys 2020 performance. What'd you do, bro? What all did you do? Okay, someone's recorded their TV. You're killing me here. You're killing me. There's an ad for fucking mayonnaise. Expedia, eat my ass. It's so There's now Wank Fest by about 10 singers. I've said this before, I think I like Tyler the Creator more than I like his music. Who's this now? Okay, this is killing my boner. Uh, I'm trying to get the fucking goddamn. There's Jimmy Savile. Where's the goddamn Tyler the Creator at the Grammys? Anyway, can't get it for fuck's sake. Close the player. Fuck off. So yeah, he won a Grammy. Honestly, McCann. I bet you McCann stayed up and watched that on a stream. I was just like wearing all his Tyler gear with his fingers crossed. Come on, Tyler, for God's sake. Fucking come on. Speaking of awards, what should have got an award was this. What are you doing? <laughs> Now, the, the cool thing about uh, about that video is that that's Snoop Dogg singing in Korean. And it says singing in Korean, or is he just so fucking wiped out? Absolutely wiped. Absolutely blazed out of it. That he just thought, it's cool, man. I'm going to just go, ding, 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 ding. Sipping on gin and juice and fucking... Two stroke by the sound of you. What are you doing? <laughs> now, if I if that was a white guy, you'd be like, send him to jail for fuck's sake. You know what I mean? Jimmy Kimmel's there for some fucking reason. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. 
Gangnam Style? Oh, it's actually the fucking Gangnam Style. So you guys didn't have you didn't have any time to hang out together at all and have any fun. Uh, unfortunately, not. Wow. Not Let's do I, I that. I love that PS. What's his name? Psy. PS. Oh, this is the real video. Snow up dark. It's dark. Oh no. It sounds like Korea. It sounds like Korea. Yeah. You want to pull out our secret yeah. weapon? What's your secret oh, weapon, yeah. man? There we go. Yeah. Drinking at night. What's going on? Oh, that's so white to be playing the fucking oboe or whatever it is. Strangely enough, they cut that out of the program where they're like, it's probably a bit too edgy for him to be just making up some sort of Asian language. Oh, it's what are you doing? <laughs> Do you know what? I watched the fucking Aaron Hernandez program where they're like, once he died, <coughs> they begged his family to be like, let's get a look at this cunt's brain to see if he has CTE from blows to the head. Now, what we're experiencing here is just the culmination of hundreds of thousands of joints per year melting someone's brain down to the point where it just looks like a walnut and then they're like do you want to pretend to sing this song in korean and he's like yo man no problem <laughs> Sipping on sake and juice. Unreal. I know that's that's probably uh that's probably Japanese, but sure they're all the same, aren't they? And that's that's what would have been expected to have been said of me. At that particular point. Um What's going on here? What's going on? Um right, okay. Let me hit the questions and then we'll GTFO out of this motherfucker. That was that was that left a bad taste in my mouth. Interested to hear more about how you build up new material. What process do you use, if any, or is it just a case of you have a funny idea and then you run with it from Barry Mayers? Here's the crack. If you've done stand up long enough, you just kind of you can go two ways. You can be like, I'm going to you know go meet up with a mate or gonna go to a cafe by myself or something, and I'm just gonna sit there and think of things. Or you just kind of you know you just kind of fucking pick it up out of day, you know what I mean, you're, you're fucking squirt, you know, you're flying along, and you're just like, ooh, that'd be funny, ooh, that'd be funny, hmm, not bad, hmm, that'd be funny, and eventually you get good at that, and then before you know it, you know, by the end of the week, you've maybe got like fucking eight things in your phone, um, you know what I mean, and then you just fucking try it on stage, and that's it, what the fuck is this? The new Beyond Meatball Marinara Sub is now available only at Subway. How do you grow these plant-based meatballs? Gently plant one in a bed of marinara. And eight weeks later, you have this. I tend to them with sterling silver shears, but truly, any silver will do. They must be kept at approximately 62.7 degrees Celsius. Any higher, and I fan them by hand. I made this one ahead of time, but you can get yours at Subway. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, what the fuck? Someone sent me this. It was like an ad for Subway, and they're like, oh, it's Maltesers round two. The members of the meat free community. Will be a room that smells good. Uh. Till now. Introducing the new meatless. What? Are you kidding? Yeah. Um, I'm 99% sure it is actually the meat one. Uh, am I the only one who's got a problem with wow. yeah. Am I the only one? I haven't eaten meat in three years. I've swallowed already. Who, who swallowed? Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm trying to find this ad. Somebody sent me anyway, and they were like, oh, this is, this is the 
Is this it here? This is how we get the juiciest bowls. Hey, it's your choice. For 96 cents, you can have juicy meatballs on fresh... Oh, fuck off. Anyway. Anyway, they're all doing this now. They're doing their fucking meatless option. Even KFC. You know, they're like, oh, we do a fucking vegan burger. And if you're the sort of vegan, what, what sort of half arsed vegan is still going to KFC? You know what I mean? In the fucking genocide of those fucking ball bag chickens that they grow. You know, they're like, ah, oh, we'll get a bit of genetic fucking selection here. Do we need, you know, we're only going to eat them. Do they need wings? Nah. Do they need feet? Nah. Do they need a beak? Barely. You know what I mean? Let's grow some ball bag chickens that just fucking slurp grain down. You know, they only live fucking six weeks anyway. It's essentially a pair of tits with eyes. And then we just fucking clobbered to death, you know what I mean? And that that's what KFC are doing. And then they're like, we also do a fucking, you know, onion badgie and a bap. And the vegans are like, oh, lovely. Let me just step through this squelchy pooch. Let me just step on these deformed, fucked up chickens. Because I'm being catered for now. Because I'm special. I've made the effort. And then we're eating the wee burger. Oh my God, tastes lovely. Even though they fucking massacre chickens. And do I have a problem with it? Absolutely not. I'll stuff a zinger straight in my fucking face. But you know what I mean? <laughs> he ain't right, vegans. He ain't right. Make up your fucking mind. Unbelievable. <laughs> what am I doing? Let me get these fucking questions, bro. Uh, not a question, but the show was quality on Friday. Thanks, mate. Got myself an all-black cap, hoping for some merch will go online. Yes, it will go online. I just have to go collect it at some point. Is there an age limit? Is there an age limit on your shows? I'm 15 and would love to go see you sometime. Um, I'll be honest with you, mate. The fucking Odyssey, I think, was 14+. plus, So that, that was the one to go to. Unfortunately, all the other ones tend to be in, like... We see, I'll be going on tour same time next year and you know a lot of those theaters are kind of 16 plus 14 plus or whatever if you're with an adult so that's all do you get annoyed Matty? do you get annoyed on funny hecklers has there been a time where you have stopped and asked for someone to leave was that the second sac show and it was amazing um <clears throat> I don't know, comedy never gets the respect. If you were at like a fucking play or something and somebody started, kept talking and you were like, get this cunt out, they would just throw him out and be like, you're disrupting the place. Um, But, ooh, buddy. But for some reason, the comedy, people just let it happen. I mean, if, if someone had a kept going at the SSE, I'd have been like, fuck them out because I don't really care that they're heckling, but the fact is everybody else has paid good money to come see me do stand up, and if all you're doing is listening to some cunt heckle, it's not worth it, you know. So get out the fuck. I get annoyed at any hecklers, you know. I don't want any crowd interaction. People love it. I'm like, nah, shut up. I didn't spend all year writing this shit for you to fucking talk. We're not having a conversation. You want to laugh? Let me make you laugh. Have you heard any songs by the Northern Irish rapper John Zoo? Wee Johnny is a good one. Fucking right I have, mate. Sure wasn't the talking to him on the internet the other day, my ass. You know, I heard some tune and I was half pissed and I was like, mate, this is a fucking banger. And uh, he's like, play it on the podcast. And then I forgot to play it on the podcast. And then he said, why didn't you play it on the podcast? You know? And then he gave me some quote from fucking Scarface. He's like, all I have is my fucking balls and my dick and I don't break them for nobody. It's not what the. <laughs> yeah, Johnny. What's He's got this Cali cave thing. You gonna make this Cali cave chain or what? He's. Yeah, my lip bleeding. Let's get this going. It'd be sick. And there's Charlie Sloth. You know what I mean? I'm into it. Funny thing is, it's a funny story about John Zoo. I was, I was outside Lavery's one day, one day after the the comedy night, and uh, this guy was talking to me, and he's like, "Oh man, it's crack. You know my mate, bloody blah, blah." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I do know him. Blah, blah. I watch your stuff," and I was like, "Oh cheers, man." Talking about this guy, you know, you know, I don't know whatever we're fucking chatting about, 
and then the girl comes over and she's blocked and she goes oh my god and the guy goes do you know who that is and she kind of turned to me and she went oh and i went mm. and she was like oh my god you're john c and i went i'm not but sure you know what i mean close enough close enough mate um yes of course i've heard his tunes mate are you joking me played them on this podcast numerous times know what i mean that one, that one's a fucking absolute hater, that one. The sun in Spain's like Cali days. Came a long way from alleyways. My eyes got the Cali glaze. Don't need to wear ballies and carry blades. In the Cali cave, never saw a man smoke like Danny Blaze. Think back on the many days. Sat for my favorite. Hefty. Um, now, I believe, like, is the Cali cave a weed shop somewhere? When it comes to the ones who's running them flavors, Cali cave ain't fucked. There we go, mate. Cali Cave plug. Good man. Into that. Now, if a couple of fucking grams landed on the doorstep. Huh? Johnny, you know what I mean? Am I Cali Cave? Know what I mean? Couple of fucking. Up on the ground, land on the doorstep, wouldn't say no to it. At all now. But that is a fucking banger, that the start of that there. It'd be sick. I swear to God, I have like, I know there's probably a question in this podcast. We're like, well, if you could do something else that wasn't doing comedy, what would you do? See if I could make beats, man. Be game over. Be game over. What's your opinion on when a celebrity dies, then everyone posts it like it's the trendy thing to do? Uh, so many posts this morning about Kobe Bryant, my brother included, who doesn't have a clue about basketball, saying it was the, he was the best. Well, I, I, explain, I sort of explained that earlier. The reason someone like Kobe Bryant transcends the fucking sport that he does, you know what I mean? He He's obviously such a savage that people can fucking relate to it or be inspired by it, even if they've never picked up a basketball in their life, you know what I mean? I didn't know much about him, but that that's why. And then also it's a fairly fucking tragic way to lose such a talent. And especially because he was with his daughter, like, ugh. Grim. So grim. Imagine fucking, imagine the, the, what you would be feeling if you were just in a helicopter that was just like going down. Like, you'd be shit in your pants. Kieran. Mick Cav something. Uh podcast question. Uh, when when's Connor Begley going to be on the next podcast? What happened on the last podcast? Oh yeah, the fucking card ran out or something. And we talked for like fifty minutes and I was like, oh well that didn't work. Or else the the something was wrong anyway. There was it was buzzing the whole way over. It was something fucked up anyway. Can't remember. Um when myself, my girlfriend Neve met him through a friend up in Derry a few years ago at Halloween. He recommended your podcast at the time and haven't stopped listening to it since. We've bumped into him a few times since. Funny cunt, by the way. Congrats on yesterday's SSE shows. Loved it. All the best of morning, Ellie. Oh my god. Yeah, once I get this new office, I think I'm just gonna have I may as well do an episode with just I mean, this is the thing. There's a lot of comedians knocking about and I haven't done podcasts with any of them, you know? Where's all the podcasts with like Woodsy, you know? Woodsy did fucking Lavery's last Wednesday. Murdered. Incredible. Um, what line of work would you see yourself in? Well, this is the thing. I do about seven lines of work. Do you know what I mean? Live stand up, podcasts, live podcasts, merch, uh, fucking run a comedy club. You know what I mean? We do a lot of stuff. So, mm. but like I just said, I could. I remember watching a documentary about. Jay Z making that black album, and he was just in the fucking studio with like Timberland and all. He's just like making beats, and he's like, "There you go, million dollars, eat my fucking taint." Mm. Would love that. Oh, I thought I got black ink in my lovely top. Um, if you were to change slash do anything different about the SSE shows, what would it be? Um, well, uh, I would. I don't know. Well, no, I wouldn't really change much. To be honest, like, I've never done it before, so there's no fucking reference. So in my mind, it went pretty well. And judging by the feedback, people enjoyed it a lot. So 
I maybe would have made another video to play in the middle, but I just didn't have time with the old personal circumstances. So maybe if I do it again and, you know, there's less pressure and stress around it, then we can get, we could get more done, you know. But I think uh, it was good. Try to like them Green McDowell Cold Beer Club. Uh, fuck that. Not fuck that, but I can't click the link. Sorry, bro. What is it? Tried to link you the Graham McDuck. Let me see. Graham Mc. Oh, wait a second. What's this? What am I looking for? Hold on, what am I looking for? Now, I'm the I'm the wrong person to show this to because Dave Elliott can do like the best Graham McDowell impression. So whatever I'm gonna say ain't gonna be as funny as what he can do. Also, I'm due uh, an upgrade on my phone, so let's go get that new phone with the fucking ten thing. Hey, go, jump up here. Comfy, yeah. Wasn't really for them, but they love it. <laughs> I designed this house about three, four years ago in China, in the middle of the night, and I was just messing around on my laptop, and I drew how I wanted the layout, and pretty cool to kind of go from that all the way through and kind of seeing it take shape. I met my wife to be Kristen during this process. She's an interior designer, and I, I hired her company to help me build this house. And we so what even is, what even is that accent? It's kind of in between a lot of things. And what am I even talking about? It off and the rest is history. So this is snooker. It's a really complicated, difficult, frustrating game. I think it's, you know, immensely very similar to golf because, um, you know, probably one of the few sports where the ball is just kind of waiting to be hit and you've got all the time in the world to hit it. This room was pretty much built exactly for this table, so there's not really an inch to spare anywhere. You need about five feet of clearance around the table. Fifteen reds. Five feet of clearance around the table. Such a fucking... I mean, I mean, he, like, he gives a fuck what I think of his accent, like, you know what I mean? I designed this house in China, so, it's like, what a fucking... Yeah, wiping your arse with fifties line, that is. I designed this house in China. Suck my dick, world. You know what I mean? Pot all the reds until they disappear, and then you pop the colors in sequence. Mr. Black, it's a killer game. I need to work on it. It's a killer game, you need to work on it. <laughs> this is my movie. I feel like I'm probably in as good a place as I've ever been on and off the golf course. And when I get back on tour, I'm fresh mentally and ready for the challenges that the golf's going to bring to me. You know what I mean? Oh, wait. Who is G-Mac? Uh, I don't know. Um, he's Irish. He plays a little golf. He drinks the odd beer from time to time. He likes to hang out and uh, just kind of be himself, really. So my hobbies outside of golf. Uh, I'm a big sport fan. I love all sports, mainly uh, uh, football, British football, or soccer, as you guys like to call it. My big soccer, as you guys like to call it. United fan, but uh, you know all sports, TV, going. I swear to God, I, like. If I moved to America, I think I'd be like, can, can, can you get my uncle to just ring me and just be like, fucking right in everyone. The damn. To the events, um, you know, movies, just hanging out really, you know, I mean, uh, golf's such a, such a busy life out there. I just love to come home and chill out, drink a couple of beers and relax. My favorite movie, uh, yeah, drink a couple of beers and relax. <laughs> my favorite movie, and chill out, drink a couple of beers and relax. My favorite movie, uh, you know, there's so many to choose from. Um, favorite movie I've watched lately would probably be uh, Social Bear. Would be what? That was awesome. Probably be uh, Social Bear. What? Man? That was awesome. My favorite superhero would be Batman. Super Par. Um, I guess teleportation would be great. You know, we teleportation. <laughs> Teleportation. I hate when people are doing those fucking like, I'll feed you the question, then you just, 
you know, I don't want my voice to be in it, so you repeat the question. So we're like, what's your favorite superhero? Well, if I had to fucking suggest my favorite superhero, it would probably be Spiderman. If I had to guess with a guy, Spiderman. Uh, and his best power would be uh, Teleportation. Fucking so much on the golf tour that uh, relax. You know, a couple of cold beers. Get myself a cold beer. Uh, within an instant, that would, uh, you know, if I could get myself a cold beer. Uh, within an instant, that would uh, that relax in a cold beer. So, um, definitely chill out, drink a couple of beers, and something along those lines. <laughs> As sportsmen, we're all pretty superstitious, you know. I like to uh, drink a couple of beers and before I go to the golf course. You know, I only use cold beer. Use my lucky marker. Drink um, a couple of cold you know, beers. Everything's got to be. I'm gonna send Dave Elliott a message and see if he can fucking. Uh, I'm gonna play it on the podcast. Hold on. Where is he? Davey Elliott. Big Davey. Big Davey. Big Davey. Where are you? Here we are. Davey, I'm in the middle of a podcast here and someone sent me a link to uh, the the GMAC fucking couple of cold beers. You've no doubt heard that and can do a great impression of it. I'll just see if you can send me a voicemail of you doing that before the end of this podcast and I'll play it on the thing. Cheers, couple of cold beers, chill out. Now, hopefully, Davey pulls through with a couple of Everything's got to be the way I like it before I go to the first tee. So uh, I think we're we're pretty superstitious guys as golfers. If I wasn't a golfer, what would I be? GMAC. Yeah. Just hanging out, really, you know. I mean, uh, chill out, drink a couple of beers and relax. Y'all can back now, you hear? Now, he finally did his normal accent at the end there. Did you hear that? That's his regular accent. No, I mean, uh, chill out, drink a couple of beers and relax. Y'all come back now, you hear? I think Boo Weekly would be proud of me there. I think it did a bit of primary there. Strange chap, but you know what I mean. Like, like I said before, I'm sure he can give a fuck what anyone thinks about him. You know what I mean? Mm. Man, just over here in my fucking mansion, slinging loads into uh, my millionaire wife. Who's an interior designer? Squirt, squirt. Cool. We carry on with the questions. Uh, uh, would you eat bat soup? Yeah, that's apparently where coronavirus is coming from. You know what I mean, guys? You're in China. Eat some fucking rice. You know? Not fucking... Let me eat some bat soup. What do you see yourself doing in 10 years? Hopefully just... Just doing a fucking G Mac, drink chill and I drink a couple of cold beers. Uh, uh great show on Friday night with everything you've have you have going on, you smashed it. Uh bro, regardless it was smashed. Okay. We're professional around here. You know, if we're not people making people physically sick. Uh, bringing back the death penalty for hacklers, mm, just fucking get out of there. Like telecons to start celebrating when people Tell cons to start celebrating people when they're alive, not just when they're dead. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, you know... Yeah, Kobe was well... Fu I mean, you're not talking about some, like, underground... Yeah, fucking musician or something that no one knew about. Kobe Bryant was well celebrated, and that's why people were so goddamn shocked when he died. It's just a shocking death, you know what I mean? You find out anybody died in a helicopter crash, you'd be like... <gasps> what? Also, <clears throat> I've left the heater on in here and I can't fucking breathe out my nose. Um, bro, what is that? Celebs. Celebs killed in helicopter crash. Famous people who died in helicopter crashes. Dot com. Kobe Bryant. Stevie Ray Vaughan, bro. Unbelievable. Um... Vic Morrow, actor, don't know who that is, really, to be honest. Bill Graham, Tor Troy Gentry, don't know that. Davy Allison, NASCAR driver. John Garan, these are just like, I don't know any of these people. Colin McRae, that's right. After that, cunt driving like a psycho for so many years. Dies in a goddamn helicopter crash. Stay on the grind, sir. Yeah, just a load of fucking people. Most of these people are sort of... Steve Hislop. Motorbike rider. Um, fuck. Anyway, there's, lo there's loads of them. This list just goes on and on and on. I don't know. Most of these people, there's an American footballer. I don't know him. 
George W. Casey Sr., some, some, I don't know, some Vietnamese dude. Um, anyway, load of cunts died. Ever lived abroad? Been in Spain two years now and can't wait to get back to Irlanda. I don't know what that noise is, guys. I'm sorry. Um, no, I've never lived abroad. I've li- I lived in Glasgow, which I wouldn't say is abroad. Like, but um, no, nah, I've never lived abroad. But I can see, I could see how the, the, you'd kind of want to get home, even though, you know, you get home and you're like, ah, oh, it's fucking shit here and all. But like, we do get it fairly handy. You know what I mean? Everything is fairly mild in Ireland. Like, let's face it. If there's not bombs going off, but yeah, I could see how I could miss it. I mean, the fact that you can't just fucking drink a glass of water without getting the shit might be handy enough, you know? Take that for granted. You're hungover one day and you're like, oh man, I'm fucking dying. And then you drink, you know, a brown cup of fucking worms when you're in Spain and you just shit all over yourself. Who's this now? Brooke, where did Thomas go? Bro, it's been 10 years, let it slide. Would you ever do the SSA Arena again? There's some que- there's some questions that come in. They're like, would you have done anything different? Or like, would you do it again? It just seem a wee bit like, bro, you sure you want to be at that game? I mean, the problem is now, it's kind of at about a level that you kind of have to nearly stick at. You know, if if I had to do it a couple of times a year, no big deal. Um, At the end of the tour, would I do it again? Yeah, I probably would. Like, to be honest, it's just, I can see why bigger acts do it, where they're like, let me just do one night here and play to all these people instead of fucking doing several nights. If you were to leave a comedian's... If you were to have a comedian's come down with me, what would be on your menu and what, if anything, could you expect to get from the other lads? I mean, if you're talking like the immediate sort of comedy squad type fellas, uh, you go to Mickey's house, you'd be getting a fucking... You'd be getting a Domino's and then... You know, probably like a load of a load of drink and some substances, and then probably sexually assaulted. You know what I mean at Mickey's house. Um, McCann, I don't know if he could if he's even qualified to fucking toast a bit of bread. Shane, would you, Shane? Well, Shane mightn't be bad. You know what I mean. He eats fairly healthily. You, you go around to him and be like, "Yeah, it's dinner, but I've made you an omelet," and you're like, "Okay." Uh, Woodsy would do a good job I think Woodsy's a pretty foody guy You know Eats out a lot Enjoys cooking I think Enjoys eating nice stuff uh, Kerry Bartlett Dave Elliott I'm sure would do a good job too um, You know a lot of, There'd be a lot of steak nights There'd be a lot of steaks And fucking Dave Elliott probably cook you like a, like a cooked breakfast For your dinner Which I wouldn't be mad at You know what I mean I wouldn't turn I wouldn't say no to that Kieran Bartlett would probably be decent as well. Kieran Bartlett told me uh, they used to do come down with me nights at uni. And I was like, bro, absolutely just eat dominoes and finger each other. Duh. Right, we've got a... a bro, a bro. we got to rattle through these questions because there's so many. Um, Oh, there's so many questions. Right, let's do it. Let's do a quick fire round because we've got 13 minutes left. And I'm sure you don't want to hear the rest of this shit. Um, did you change your set? Add to it much? That's from Nathan Moore. I do it much on the second SSE show or from your tour show. Uh, yeah, there was pro- there was enough time in between when there was a few bits added. In between the two shows, I actually took material out for the second one because it was running over too much. Did you change your set? No, same question. Uh, when's your next big gig in Belfast? Who knows? Are you jealous of Dirt Civil's intro music? It's definitely challenging yours as number one. Well, the only difference is there is once again... McCann had someone step in and do something for him, which is the story of his fucking life. Because his mate made his music, and my intro music, I didn't make it. But I definitely assembled all the noises together, you know? The beat is from Action Bronson, Shiraz, and the audio is from uh, a James Brown video. And then I put a wee bit of voice in myself. So I made mine, and his was donated to him. So... Whatever the fuck ever. Um, it was also made by professional musicians, as far as I know. But yeah, none of them fucking retards could put that together. What song you keep? What song do you keep humming? Is it meant to be Rock and Roll Part Two or The Stranglers? Peaches keep trying to work it out. 
I don't know, but they do blend together nicely, don't they? <laughs> Bro, you didn't know I could fucking beatbox. Keep this anonymous. You said when you go out running, there's creepy guys hanging about the forest. Have you had any more run? Bro, I haven't been running in fucking weeks. Have you seen the weather? Uh, I've been running near Hollywood. Fellas dressing in women's underwear, leaving it hanging after porn mags. And phone numbers linking to ex-hamster showing the videos they've been making. <laughs> uh, P.S. Was that the gig? <laughs> Enjoyed it. No, I haven't run into any more crazy dudes. Um... But, you know, someone else sent me a thing talking about Ari Shafir's tweets. He tweeted out, Kobe Bryant died 23 years too late. He got away with rape because all the Hollywood liberals who attack comedy enjoy rooting for the Lakers more than they dislike rape. Big ups to the hero who forgot to gas his chopper. I hate the Lakers. What a great day. <laughs> Which is like, you know, I'm I'm... Rarely do I get like offended by a joke, but one like that, you're just like, mate, you're just, it, it just looks like you're trying a bit too hard to get some fucking attention. You dumb cunt. Um, Irish Fair is not funny anyway. Qu- question for the podcast Did you feel emotional after SSE gigs? I was at the first one and loved every second of it. Roll on. Did I, f- I just burped in the microphone? Did I feel emotional? Um, not really, to be honest. I felt relief. I felt a lot of relief. The morning of the second SSE show, I had a small bit of food poisoning, spent most of the morning boking my ring up and shedding out rusty water, but thankfully the boking stopped and I was able to go to your show, but thanks for making me nearly void my balls multiple times, surrounded by multiple strangers due to laughing my bag off with an already weakened hole. <laughs> cool. Disgusting. Just want to say I had a great time at the show. I don't know what that means. That's too long. Anyway, someone called Adam Rogers, sent me a nice message. Too long to read out. Uh, do you think priest nuns masturbate seeing as they can't marry? And that's from Chris Reezy. That's so funny, like. Now, let me tell you something. I'm surprised nuns aren't turning up at physios with fucking tennis elbow going, I, do, I don't know what has happened. Priests and you know what I mean. I hope they're fucking pulling one off instead of fucking sliding it into some kids. But you have that dick ripped. Unless if you just like the shame keeps you from like touching your own dick, and eventually enough time goes by, and you're like, listen, I'm just not. I just don't get those feelings anymore. Which might be the case. You know what I mean. If you're not, if you're not busting nuts, you're not making any with the fucking with the testosterone. But you know what I mean. If I was a pri- I don't know, you'd have the dick ripped to clean off yourself, like. Unbelievable. Of course they do. You know what I mean? Some old nun with a fucking torn rotator cuff. She's like, listen, I was going hard on that skittle last night. You know what I mean? Had that crucifix in my twat. <laughs> uh, do you have a manager? No. Constant move to America and start talking American after five minutes. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I just like to chill out and have a couple of beers, mate. The Grammys. Yeah, we talked about that. Talk about the recent celebrity deaths. And so... Yeah, man, everyone just fucking... I was going to ask about the SSE playlist. Yeah, if you go SSE Homegrown, that's the name of the playlist on, on Spotify. And I, I should be the guy that made it. SSE Homegrown. It's like a load of tunes from here. Which was even weirder. You know, having and So I Watch You From Afar play in the intro video and they were actually in the crowd. Weird. Final question, coronavirus, and why are the mad Chinese bastards have to do daft shit like eat bat soup? That's why they're all going to die, even though there's millions of them, and they'll take the rest of us down too. Yeah, that is the fucking question, isn't it? And, you know, they're a lot more holistic than we are over here, so like they'll be like, listen bro, I eat this because it gives me a boner, or I eat this because it fucking gives me longevity or whatever. So they're like, I'm going to eat some bat soup. They're fucking nuts, half of them Asians. You ever see Japanese people just they're like, I'm going to eat a live fucking eel. And they just deep throat the eel and the tail's fucking slapping around their face. It's fucking disgusting. And I, you know, there's there's always some reason behind it. Oh, this makes you really healthy. You know, if you eat a full octopus up your nose and they're like, 
sniff an octopus fucking legs up their nose. Disgusting. Like, literally, there's loads of it. Japanese live food. You know what I mean? Have these cunts not heard of a fucking... Have these... Ugh. Have these cunts... Have these cunts not heard of a fucking... Uh, compilation? Um, KFC vegan burger? You dirty bastard! I'm gonna throw up here. Here we are, got a bowl full of shrimps. And people are uh, lifting them up. Here we go. And that's a lot bigger than it looked a second ago. And he's just gonna bust the arse off it. There we go, rip the head. It's kicking like all fuck. And he's like, you eat this. Ah, okay. Ah. Isn't that gross? <laughs> There's a fish that's been cooked and it's fucking still breathing. Gross. I mean, is there fucking mean? Is there is there any need for this? And then there's this, this girl's gonna lift this baby fucking octopus, which I don't like because octopuses are quite, oh, it's, it, look how strong that is, bro. Like it's gripping the bowl, there's a big ceramic bowl and it's gripping the bowl so hard that it's lifting it and she's trying to fucking eat it. No fucking way, bro. Ah. Oh. Imagine what that's doing to your insides. Imagine trying to shit that out and it's gripping onto your lungs. Don't throw it. Not hit. Bro, it's running away. Like. Okay. It's sticking. Okay. Uh, here you go. That's it. And uh, have some soju to wash it down, maybe. Mm. Fuck off. <laughs> now, I thought this was going to be funny, and now I just kind of feel like I need to shed a wee bit. Uh, girl who eats cats and dogs, ASMR. Uh, and I... Are you joking me? Are you fucking joking me? Even a short drive should feel that was a that, do you know what that was an ad for? Vegan burger from KFC. Oh my god. The CIA are coming in the window. I'm getting fucked in the ass. Epstein didn't kill himself and the coronavirus is a myth. Shout out to Kobe who's alive in Cuba. Fuck me. <laughs> yep, she's eating a turtle. She's eating a turtle and they've garnished it with some crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Now the music, unnecessary. What are you eating now? A big mound full of fucking maggots. One, two, three. And then we we'll move on to what's next. She's eating, let me see, live. Uh, what the fuck is the third one? <sighs> I'm sweating. What a dirty, dirty cunt. What's this one? What have we got? She's got an egg and she's taking the... Th and it's a fertilized egg, so there's a bird in it, and also... <coughs> and it's a duck. Oh, you dirty cunt. This is a million and so... Oh, you fucking dirty cunt. What else have we got? Live worms of some sort. She's putting it on a little spoonful of something. It basically looks like noodles, but they're alive. Oh, this bitch is grotesque. What are you eating? Are you just eating fucking tapeworms? She's like, listen, we'll skip a few layers here. I'm just going to eat parasites. There's a rabbit. Roasted. Whole. She's got what looks like a bowl of sugar puffs on closer inspection. Worms. Oh, she licked her lips. What's that? 
a deep fried toad or something. This bitch needs shot dead. Snake, not hanging around for that. No thanks. Is that dog foot? That's dog leg. You know what I mean? You going to KFD for a fucking dog leg? <laughs> Thumbs up. Ah, oh, you dirty hair. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. And the last one is a cat. She's eating a cat. And I've watched a lot of people eating pussy online. But never was it slow roasted. <laughs> 39 seconds left, guys. Join us next week where we'll be, maybe have a guest, maybe not. I might have quit doing podcasts because I'm watching a woman eat a cat. She's eating a fucking cat, okay? Cheers for listening. Cheers for paying into the Patreons, gender banter, or patreon.com forward slash gender banter. Uh, I'm just going to Google therapist real quick. Uh, we'll see you next week, 5th of February. We're in Lavery's at Damon O'Clock. And she's eating a cat. And the main thing to take away from today is the fact that she's eating a cat. Cheers for coming to the SSE. But this woman's eating a cat. Okay? See you next time. <laughs>